Um, so yeah, I am going to talk about um, the sort of almost the history of uh, using ASCOT to inform uh, care planning in older adult care homes. So I imagine a number of people here have some familiarity or have come across the kind of more widely used versions of ASCOT before, um, that being the self-completion tool for using surveys, um, and perhaps even the structured face-to-face -face questionnaire that, that, that is part of the ASCOT toolkit. Um, those are probably the most widely used versions of ASCOT. Um, but we know from both research and experience that using these methods, using self-completion surveys or very structured face-to-face -face interviews is not a very good way of, of comprehensively collecting outcomes information in care home settings. Um, if you think about older adult care home settings, um, a large percentage of the population in those settings will have quite severe and profound needs. Um, for example, uh, dementia, and often not mild dementia, but more moderate and severe dementia, which makes uh, those methods, asking someone to self-complete a survey or answer a very structured question, quite challenging. So what you end up with is very partial information um, about outcomes in care home settings. And this was something that the ASCOT team, when it was developing the tool, uh, recognised quite early on and spent some time thinking about, well, how do you collect uh, outcomes information in care home settings? Um, and the approach that they came up with um, was, was, to, was to do uh, a mixed methods approach. Um, uh, and we created a tool called ASCOT CH4. Um, and what we mean by mixed methods is rather than just using a single <laughs> approach to collecting data, uh, it uses a range of different methods flexibly. Um, so while it does include uh, conversations and interviews with residents themselves to understand their lives and outcomes, this can be supplemented with interviews with care home staff, um, with family members and friends, and also observations of people's lives. Uh, and then you collate all this information and the researcher uh, rates quality of life from that. And one of the great sort of upsides to this, this approach is not only does it allow you to rate quality of life, but it provides you with an enormous amount of data on the lived experience, very rich data about what someone's life is like, what support they get, how they're helped, uh, the interactions they have, all kinds of things. So it's, it's really all right, that's it's really very rich data. Um, the downside is that collecting this data is incredibly <laughs> resource intensive. Okay, when are we doing them? I think someone's not muted. So as I said, this, uh, this approach is incredibly resource intensive. So um, it can take uh, a day and a half to collect data on five people. Um, but going back to thinking about all this very rich data that you collect, it, it, it does mean that we, we are very early on started thinking about actually, how can this tool be used to inform practice or be used in practice? Um, and a lot of the work that Anne-Marie did um, for SSCR um, starting about 10 years ago and I was involved in, was, was, was looking at how this, this data, this very rich data or this approach to collecting, collecting information can be used to inform practice or support practice. And there were studies looking at uh, feedback and how that changes outcomes. There was thoughts and, and, and pilots around, could we create a simpler version of the tool that would, that would allow it to be used in practice more so rather than rating individuals, could we rate entire homes? Um, we also trained individuals and different organisations were using it. And I think it's worth noting uh, away from care homes specifically that, that, that Cumbria, and I think no, I know Louise is here today, um, had a kind of trial of using ASCOT to, to inform care planning more broadly um, in social, social care as opposed to just care homes. But so there were all these thoughts going on, ideas going on about how we can use this approach, the richness of this approach to support practice. And in uh, 2016, we had, we, had, we had the opportunity to move on with this approach by uh, conversations that particularly Anne-Marie was having with the Widden Group, a, a, a care provider uh, who provided a number, of care, a number of care homes in New South Wales. Um, and they were very interested about how ASCOT can be integrated into their, their practice, um, and particularly around care planning. And, and what they were very keen on was, was having a consistent approach to evaluating and setting goals. And they were kind of concerned that staff were not confident to uh, initiate the sort of conversations around non-medical or non-health aspects of care, so particularly around emotional and social well-being. Um, and they were also very keen that all residents could be included in this process. So that, and that's very much what sits under the ASCOT approach to looking at outcomes in care homes. 
And so we started working up an approach, and I'll talk through that in a minute. Um, and we put in place a 15 month pr project to develop and pilot an approach um, that was used by 51 residents, was used with 51 residents across four sites. Um, and, and because it was Australia, we mainly did online training sessions, although there was like some face to face support when Emory went out there. Um, and I think we ran four training sessions to help these staff in what was actually four sites um, understand how to go about uh, conducting ASCOT based care planning. Uh, and later on, training was taken over by Widden. And what I thought I'd do is I'd share now what, what it is we kind of trained uh, the Widden group to, to use. And so this sort of ASCOT care planning conversation was used an approach called circle of care. Um, and you'll see why we called it circle of care when I explain how it works. Um, so basically it uses the ASCOT framework to structure care planning conversations. That is the different areas that ASCOT covers and the different ways about thinking about outcomes. So the social care rating, quality of life um, ratings. Um, but importantly, it uses different viewpoints to understand someone's life and inform the care planning conversations. So what we mean by that is the care planning conversation would be pulling together uh, a, a group of people who would form the circle of care. So that would be at the center, the most important person would be the resident themselves. Um, but they would also be supported hopefully by a friend or a family member and by a member of staff who work with them and knew them well. And so by having different people who were involved in that person's life, they could supplement their views and ensure that they could, they could talk about or provide information about what their quality of life is like and talk about goals. We also train staff to supplement this, uh, this circle of care, this, this conversation with observation. So in, in cases where perhaps residents and their family members struggle to tell you about an aspect of someone's life, we train staff to go away and observe and collect information. And then we also showed them how to, to rate and set goals uh, based on ASCOT information. And what I thought I'd do is I'd share just one of the ASCOT domains. So the ASCOT tools, um, if you're not familiar with them, have eight domains, four basic domains. So that's personal cleanliness and comfort, accommodation, food and drink and safety. Uh, and then what we might call higher order domains, which, is, which are being occupied, social interaction and being in control and dignity. Um, and I'm going to talk about food and drink because if anyone knows me, they know that food and drink is always my favourite domain. And the way, at least in, in each domain, you would start trying to understand that person's experience is by a very kind of qualitative, conversational, open ended approach. So start by asking the circle of care, the people there, particularly the resident, what they're experiencing. Do you like the food here? What kind of food do you get? How do you? So rather than trying to rate it, just getting people to talk about their experience with regard to food and drinking or in a different domain, it could be around occupation. And so once that conversation has got going and you've got quite a bit of information about that person's experience, either from the person themselves or the other members of the circle of care, you collectively move on to try and answer and rate the ASCOT question. And here is the, the, the ASCOT question for food and drink. Uh, so you might say, so given everything you've just told me, which of these following statements best describes your experience? And then you might talk through with the person and the people in the circle of care to try and decide which of these four levels best describes that person's experience. And from that, um, that information you've collected and the conversation you have, you may go, you may start setting goals. So for example, if someone said, oh, I really like the food here, um, you know, it's good food, but it always comes late. So I'm at the end of a corridor um, and it always comes late. So it's nice food, but it's a bit cold by the time it gets to me. So perhaps one of the goals is to change the order in which, or the, order, the time in which they get their food. Um, so you can see how learning, learning stuff about someone's experience can lead into goals for changing care planning. Outside of the, the interview, um, the person conducting the care planning would also complete this question based on what they've learned. And this is the expected question. This is a question asking, what this person's life would be like without services and support. It's a hypothetical question. And it's done in order to get some sense of the, of the difference the support from the care home is making. And this isn't asked directly to the resident because if it's misunderstood, it can look like you're taking someone's service away. So it's done, done outside. And, it, and, it, and it's, it's used to evaluate 
how much difference the care home is making to that person in that area of their lives. And that very basically is the tool, and of course, repeated across all of the domains. And so this is what Widden went away and used in 2016 and 2017. And there are, we had initially, we had very positive responses from staff, resident and family members. So resident and family members found that they were very happy or very pleased that they could talk about areas of their lives uh, in the home they weren't previously able to talk about, that were important to them. Um, and staff felt more confident um, after the interviews um, that they could support people properly. Um, it wasn't all positive. There were some issues with ratings. Um, I think some staff were rating perhaps too highly because they were concerned that they were being judged on this. Um, I mean, we, we, this was addressed with a bit more training and explaining that, you know, if, if you rate too highly, it, it doesn't reflect people's lives and you can't, you can't do your care planning as, as you should if you're suggesting their lives are already really good. Um, so this was addressed with more training. Uh, since that initial experience, um, the Widden Group expanded uh, their... Their, their pilot to seven homes. By 2022, it had gone down to five homes using the ASCOT approach to care planning. Um, and speaking to Widden in 2022, they felt that some homes had made a real success of it. And they talked about some, you know, staff really liking it, residents really liking it. So reflecting those initial responses, but we did talk also about some of the challenges they encountered. And so these are, these are kind of some of the challenges they identified in 2002. So not surprisingly, over the previous few years, they had been dealing with COVID. Um, and so a lot of their energy uh, was around supporting residents and, and running a care home and supporting staff uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so it made it harder for them to institute changes to do to continue on with pilots. Um, but away from that, they identified uh, a number of challenges as well. So one of the key challenges they talked about was difficulty involving family. So if you think about the circle of care, we talk about how, how, how it's really good to have a family member there or a friend. And they did find it difficult. Obviously, some residents don't necessarily have a family member um, who's either uh, involved or lives nearby or at all. Um, and so sometimes they found themselves phoning family members at different times. You know, So having, having, having one meeting then supplementing with a conversation later on the phone. There was also some issues around staff engaging with training. And this they discovered when they realized that staff hadn't gone to the training that had been set up by them internally, um, but had started using the tool incorrectly. Um, there was also some issues around the use of observation. So Widden admitted that almost no staff did observation. And I think this is in line with you know, previous, uh, so if you think about uh, the SOFIE tool, um, a few years ago that that had problems with staff going away and not doing observations um so staff didn't tend to find the time to do observations although we see it essential to understanding someone's lives if they can't tell you about it um, and finally the last two are quite sort of similar um so they they are required uh by legislation to do a health-based care planning so that's what they have to do by law um and they found there was some overlap between what they were doing for health and some of the, some of the bits they were doing in the ASCOT. And they felt they were, they were doubling up their working places. Um, so this came to the issue about how they integrate into their system. Um, and they felt they didn't necessarily have the time and the space as an organization to stop and think about how it fits with all the other things they do. Um, and I think they talked about how they wish they'd paid us to come and look at their, look at their whole system and uh, think about how it fits rather than just providing the tool at the beginning. And we did publish, so on the ASCOT website, there is a link to an article that talks uh, about the initial pilot um, in, in much more detail about what happened and, and, and uh, how staff and residents felt about it. Um, in 2021, we began a pilot in the UK of this approach with a, with a, a, a small chain of, uh, a small care home provider had a, had a number of homes. Um, we trained staff to deliver uh, the ASCOT and care planning conversations. Um, and we, we we got funding to trial and evaluate this approach over 18 months. Unfortunately, uh, the organization had to pull out of this, 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 this study uh, due to COVID and particularly around staffing issues and staff capacity since that as well, um, to the extent they've not been able to come back to this study. And I think it, I think although we weren't able to learn much about 
specifics of their use of ASCOT. I think what it does show is, is, is the difficulty a number of care providers have in, in having the capacity and the time and the staffing to try new things and really uh, investigate things. Uh, and about the same time, um, we were approached by uh, Attendo, who are one of the uh, largest Nordic care providers. And we were approached by the Swedish team, who were, who were very interested in our, our approach to care planning. Um, and so we shared something very similar to what I, I've showed earlier um, in three, three online training sessions. And I think there was a fourth feedback session as well. So we shared this approach with Nintendo and they have taken it off and used it. Um, and that is what they're going to speak about now. Um, so I'm going to stop there. But today we will share our experiences in um, implementing um, what we call quality of life conversations in our nursing homes in Sweden. Uh, we will talk a little bit about what we've learned, insights and what kind of challenges we've been facing uh, and in, in different aspects with the training, the planning and implementing ASCOT. And when it comes to ASCOT, the aim for Attendo is to improve quality of life for our customers. Uh, and we also believe that this will improve our customer satisfaction with uh, Attendo as a care provider. So Attendo, you ask, who are they? and what, the, what is it? Um, we are the largest private care provider in the Nordic countries. Uh, we have around 700 operational units in Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. Uh, we offer care for older people, but also care for people with disabilities and care for individuals and families. Our mission, as you can see on the slide here, it's, it's to empower the individual and which we do by seeing, supporting, and empowering every person. Um, in Sweden, Attendo is one of the largest private care providers uh, when it comes to nursing homes. We have around 100, uh, 110 nursing homes in Sweden, uh, all over Sweden. And um, nursing, uh, elderly care in Sweden is government funded. And in Sweden, there's also different between healthcare and care. Uh, where the primary responsibility of healthcare is on healthcare, and we're a care provider, so our main responsibility is our customers' care. And that's why we found uh, that the quality of life is something that we really um, have the ability to, to improve for our customers. Uh, and we only have nurses uh, employed at, at Tatando and, and not doc doctors, so that's also a good uh, point to know about us. Anna, will you tell us more about ASCOT and the background, how we found out about it? Yes. Um, I will tell you briefly about how we found out about ASCOT and why we found it very interesting for us. Um, I worked quite a lot with this uh, back in 2020-21 when we started this. Um, but in short, uh, we initiated a project uh, and uh, our purpose was to find new ways to define and work with quality in care and especially in nursing homes. Uh, because in Sweden, there's, uh, there's no common def definition of what is quality in a nursing home setting. And um, a lot of the um, existing quality indicators, uh, they're primarily focused on having the right processes, but not uh, so much the actual effect the process have on our customers' well-being and quality of life. So our ambition was to define a more holistic approach to quality that also included the customer perspective and customer outcomes in a more prominent way and be able to work with this perspective in a measurable way. Uh, and of course, based on research. Uh, so we went uh, through a lot of research and reports and we interviewed uh, different experts and researchers and policymakers. And uh, during this process, we, we read about ASCOT and um, actually one of the researchers we talked about also suggested that it was a very good method. And uh, the more we read about it, the more we liked it and found it very promising because it's... Um, in many ways, it's, uh, it was a very good match to what we wanted to achieve. Uh, there was quality of life indicators in a care setting, which we found very relevant because a lot of research that we found was about um, 
in the healthcare context. Um, and we also really liked that it, it wasn't just a survey, it was also a method, the care planning method that uh, fitted uh, very well with our ways of working. And it was a um, method that could um, find very concrete and specific things that could improve uh, the customer's quality of life. And uh, it was uh, a measurable and uh, quantitative way to uh, be able to follow up uh, our results and how we progressed. So we thought that Ascot, it ticked uh, all, the, all the boxes. Uh, so um, yeah, in short, we contacted Anne-Marie and um, we started to map out together how we could uh, move forward with uh, the, the pilot and training and how we could adapt it to uh, the Swedish context and so forth. And um, I think that's um, what Michaela will present to you a little bit more in detail, what, what ha has happened since then. Exactly, thank you very much, Anna. Um, yes, so uh, we've Im implemented ASCOT in different phases. Uh, we have this first phase that we call the pilot where three nursing homes were included. Uh, we educated around 10 employees and it resulted in 55 uh, quality of life conversations. The next phase is what we called first implementation. Uh, we reached uh, 12 nursing homes and around uh, 60 employees and it resulted in 190 quality of life conversations. And right now we're in the uh, middle of the continued implementation uh, that just started in the beginning of this year, uh, where we're starting with 28 nursing homes the, until the summer this year. And then next half of the year, we will have another 28 nursing homes. So we're picking up speed in the rollout. And next step for us is, is to start to look at our other segments disabled care and home care, as we see a big potential in, in creating value for, for the customers in those segments with using ASCOT. Um, and during these different phases, uh, we've had different approach to training. Um, as Nick mentioned, we start with um, the training from University of Kent. It was very much appreciated. Uh, it was kind of like a core team from Attendo that attended um, that education um, with a number of, of key stakeholders. Um, and that was, of course, in English, and we got all the material in English. And that's when it started to work at our side to make this um, in Swedish and make it uh, suitable for, for Attendo. Um, and the next step after we had the education with the University of Kent, the core team, or at least two of them, uh, educated our ASCOT champions, as we call them. And um, that was, of course, done in Swedish. Um, and the ASCOT champions was from the pilot uh, nursing homes, three of them. And uh, uh, in the evaluation of this round of training, it was clear that it was, some parts were a bit too theoretical and abstract for our employees. Uh, they asked for more examples and more uh, a clearer purpose uh, why we should work with this method. Um, but regardless of, of some challenges, it was clear that it really created value for our customers. Uh, they, the customers expressed that they really appreciated the conversation and the employees expressed that they got a better understanding of what creates, what creates uh, quality of life uh, for each individual. So we decided on uh, doing further testing uh, of the method. And uh, then we did this like second round and then it was 12 nursing homes. And worth mentioning here is ASCOT champions for us. It's the um, care staff and assistant nurses and not registered nurses or nurses. And um, their employees that our nursing home managers have handpicked because they're uh, committed and motivated employees that they we think have the possibility to do the um, quality of life conversation. And in this second phase, it was um, 
uh, given the feedback from the first phase, we, we, we simplified parts, included more examples, and this time we had experience from the pilot. We can use real care plans as examples and, and share experiences from, from the pilot uh, to make it more uh, alive and more something that, that uh, our employees could, could grasp and, and put into their context. Um, and in this phase, it was me and Lena, who's also in the, in the meeting. Uh, we traveled around Sweden and educated this uh, of the ASCA champions. Um, now we're in the middle of the third phase. And um, uh, to be able to, to continue the implementation and reach a larger number of nursing homes and employees, we've, org we've set up another organization for training. Um, and that is with a greater regional focus. We have regions, nursing home regions in Sweden. And uh, so we have one uh, regional responsible for each region. And we have a number of key persons in each region. And uh, from the quality department, we've been educating those key persons. Uh, and they have, uh, on their hand, educating the champions. Uh, so it's kind of like a train the trainer concept. And we've also, for this phase, put on a short e-learning session so they get the, the backgrounds around ASCOT and, and about the, uh, the different areas that, that we talk about in the interviews um, to, to get the ASCOT champions to get like more of a background. Uh, and that they do that before they have the on-site training uh, that the key person is leading. And we're in the middle of this phase. We've educated. 22 uh, key persons or trainers uh, that just started to, to have their own uh, training with the, in uh, the different nursing homes. Uh, so, of course, we haven't evaluated this, this yet, but uh, so far we've had a lot of positive feedback. Yes. Next, <clears throat> I will talk about a little bit how, we're, how we work with the quality of life conversations at Attendo. Um, we've made it up uh, six steps, um, and the first step is planning. Um, planning uh, involves both the overall plan for the for the unit of the nursing home, um, and it can be in terms of when to do the the all their life conversations. Um, in some units, they do it two times a year. They do all the customers two times a year, or they do some um, conversations each month. Uh, so it, and it's up to each unit how to how to organize um, their planning. And this is also about the more detailed plan in our systems where you can set times for the different um, conversations. Uh, and then the next step is the interview or the observation, and um, just like Nick told us. Um, and <clears throat> We've done, we're, we have we started with that the ASCA champion uh, only in uh, the customer. Uh, the first, like when, when the ASCA champion is, is just trained, we, we've told them just start doing observations or interviews, you get used to the method. And when you've done one or three uh, conversations, then you're ready to invite um, a relative from the customer. So we just started to, to, to involve uh, relatives. The next step <clears throat> is the assessment of quality of life. Um, and just like Nick mentioned, it's current and expected quality of life. And uh, at this stage, we always say during the education or the training, that it's not about good scores. That's not a focus that we're having. The, the, the focus is to identify uh, goals and measures that would improve the quality of life of each customer. And so we rather want bad scores and that they, they find what makes it better for, for the customer. Um, the next step is to <clears throat> identify goals and measures. And that is what, uh, during the interview, when it comes up, maybe together with the client, um, uh, you would then identify the goals and measures um, or during the observation. Uh, and of course, this should be documented. That's the next step. And we document this in, in the customer's care plan. 
Uh, and we do this together with the customer's assigned caretaker or contact person. Um, and the last step is follow up. And it, it consists of different parts. It's both following up that you stick to the plan. Uh, it's also about uh, following up that the new goals and measures take place that you discussed during the interview. Um, and also sharing the information to, to the colleagues at the nursing home so all the employees know uh, this is how this customer now wants to be taken care of. Um, and it's also about following up if a, if a, a customer says he or she doesn't feel safe, then we need to take action immediately. And that's also a, a part of this follow-up stage that the contact person then talks to the to the customer maybe within a week or two to make sure that uh, the new actions are in place and that the, the client or the customer feels safe. Um, and <clears throat> we're doing uh, the conversations every six months and that's aligned with the work we have and the regulations of care plans in Sweden. Um, and <clears throat> as described, this is how we work with quality of life conversations at an individual level. And right now our focus has been on training and learning method and just starting to do the conversations. Next step for us is start to analyze the data and see what we can find and start to visualize data for the managers so they can see based on the result, what kind of quality improvements do they need to do at their nursing home or their unit. But right now we're still on, on an individual level. And a little bit about what we've, how we found this valuable so far. Um, already from the first phase, from the pilot, we saw that this was really uh, something that created value for our customers. They really appreciated the conversations. Um, we saw that it was a great tool for customer-centric care. And our coworkers expressed that they got a better understanding of what creates quality of life for each customer. And uh, we also saw that it's really complemented the, the individual care planning. The conversations led, led to that it made it possible uh, to get better information to, to our care plans and thereby supporting uh, quality of life in the day-to-day -day care. And as I mentioned, we, have, we get measurable quality of life outcome, but we haven't yet uh, started to analyze the data. And here are some examples of the feedback that we got from our, our employees and our customers. And there's a lot of positive feedback. Um, the customers have really valued the conversation and they some expressed they want to have this more often. Uh, there's also they've also expressed that they feel important when when uh, you tell them about the purpose of the of the conversation and also the areas that you're going to discuss. Um, the Scott Champion says that they this has deepened their knowledge of the customers. Um, uh, they said that they thought they knew some customers, but new information um, emerged when they had the conversation. And the conversations makes it easier to assign individual goals in the care plan. And uh, in that way, we can have real, like reality-based care plans that are based on what what the uh, customers have expressed. But we'll also have uh, challenges, of course. <clears throat> um, one quite major challenge, I would say, is uh, the time, getting uh, uh, the time to, to do the quality of life conversations. Uh, but where we found that planning is the crucial step, of course. Um, but also that the manager is very committed and involved in this. Uh, we have also, to, to meet that challenge, we also estimated the time of the different steps in the method. And during training and implementation, we communicate that this takes more time initially. But when you're more used to the method, uh, uh, it takes less time to, to make a quality of life conversation. Um, we've also learned that some uh, customers think it's a very long interview with a lot of questions that I feel it's very demanding for them. 
And that's why we said that the ASCO champ that knows the, client, the customer can adapt the interview to the customer's ability and maybe have an interview one day with half of the questions and the next day the rest of the question. Uh, so in this way, we can, we can do this so the customer uh, feels that it's in their pace and that they don't feel exhausted afterwards. Um, but, and we also have some um, challenges when it comes to observations, uh, where some uh, uh, our employees find that it's hard to know what's my interpretation of the situation uh, and what is what the customer might actually feel. Uh, but what we said when we talked about this is that uh, if if an observation gives one new insight or one new measure and in some way can improve uh, the quality of life of, of a customer, then it's worth it. Maybe it's not like an easy job to do, but, uh, but we very find that if you find something that makes it better for, for the customer, then we should try to do it. And we will get better uh, when we do it a bit more. We've also planned for some knowledge sharing session when it comes to observations, since we have some uh, ASCO champs that really ex are really experienced and done a lot of observations. So like uh, them in the future to share their, uh, share their experience with others um, so they can learn. Um, another or the last challenge I will mention is uh, uh, those employees that had doubts of the method and felt like, is this really what we should spend our time on? Uh, once they've got going and started to have some conversations, um, they found, found the value of it and they feel that there is a clear link to our ways of working uh, with care plans. And um, then it makes it easier to see the purpose and the value of, of the conversations. Since this actually leads to measures taking place and that we have the possibility to improve our customers' quality of life. Now we will share a short video and I will ask Lisi to help me with this. Uh, hopefully the, the uh, sound will work. Otherwise, we will also share the link to the, to the video afterwards. You can look uh, after the webinar. Could you stop sharing your screen, Michaela, and then I'll share mine, is that okay? Yeah. VFP-projekt sen i november månads ett rastbrott där vi har eh, intervjuat alla våra 34 kunder. När vi gjorde de här skottsamtalen så satt vi med kunderna, vi tog en kopp kaffe, det blev ett avslappnat samtal. Vi använde oss av en malm i stärskagor för att få så tydliga svar som möjligt. För att ge ett exempel så var det en kund som sa att hon önskade mer kryddor till maten. Vi ställde in lite mer kryddor som vi satt fram på båden så att hon själv fick välja vilka kryddor hon ville och hur mycket. Och detta ledde till att hon fick bättre tid och hon blev gladare. Jag märkte att vissa kunde bli jätteglada när jag berättade om projektets syfte. Det var en kund som inte kände sig trygg. Hon blev sanerad jättemycket. Det var mest natten som kom i regler att titta på henne. Hon trodde det var något annat som hände då. Och då fick vi prata med henne och säga till henne att hon skulle använda sig på ett annat sätt så att hon kunde känna sig rädd. Efter alla Askas samtal så pratade jag med kontaktpersonerna för varje kund. Och de skrev i sin tur in önskemålen i deras genomförande planer. Inför varje teammöte som vi har en gång i månaden så går vår verksamhetschef igenom alla genomförande planer som de är Och där pratar vi också om maskor så att de andra medarbetarna också ska få information. Då pratar vi också om hur vi ska gå vidare med informationen som har kommit fram och 
یک کمیته سنتوس که آبه و مورد های واقعی تداری که کنید مستیس کنیده و یا صحبه که مستیل ها لیکس میره Thank you, Lizzie. I will just show my last slide. Um, so the next step for us, Salatando, um, is to continue this phase of the rollout in, in the nursing homes. And as we've done in, in previous phases, we uh, are going to evaluate the outcomes and collect feedback regarding new organization with regional responsibility and this new train the trainer approach. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we have not uh, we have focused on training and learning the method and, and uh, starting the, the conversations. Um, so we're working at an individual level, but we will start to analyze the outcomes uh, and visualize the data for the managers so they can work with quality improvements at their unit. Uh, so it's very exciting. Um, and we're also looking at uh, how to pilot this in our other segments, labeled care and, and home care. And um, of course, we look forward to the opportunity to improve quality of life uh, for more of our customers. And you're more than welcome to uh, ask questions and, and uh, also contact us afterwards if you have any questions. Uh, regarding our work with ASCOT, we're happy to happy to uh, share our uh, learnings. Thank you. <laughs>